online tracking is harmless. If you've got nothing to hide, you shouldn't care about privacy. Privacy is dead. We see these myths about privacy echoed everywhere we look. It's gotten to the stage where people have normalized surveillance, told us it's inevitable, and convinced us that there's no point even trying to reclaim our privacy. Snowden once said, it is, in a dark way, psychologically reassuring to say, oh, everything is monitored and there's nothing I can do. I shouldn't bother. The problem is that it's not true. I can understand where people are coming from because in a way we are being tracked so extensively. Jon von Techner is the CEO of the Vivaldi browser, and in this video he helps us debunk four myths about privacy. That it's dead, that online tracking is harmless, that the data being collected about us isn't personal, and that surveillance is normal. Let's start with myth number one. Privacy is dead. Indeed, our data is being endlessly captured by employers, retailers, governments, and hackers alike. Much of our lives have migrated to the digital realm. And this makes capturing the trail of our activities easier. But just because data collection has become the norm, it doesn't mean privacy is dead. It turns out that we're more in control than we realize. Our data is overwhelmingly able to be collected because we voluntarily hand it over. We choose services that have access to all of our emails, and we give them permission to scan and analyze our inbox. We opt for products that explicitly tell us they're going to share our data with third parties and we click agree anyway. We give companies permission to use our data to feed their algorithms. This is great news because it means that if we make better choices with applications and services that we use, it can have a huge impact on our online privacy. You can choose ones that don't have a business model about using your data. It matters what you choose. When you can easily choose more privacy preserving tools, privacy is not dead, it's achievable. Utilize a browser with a tracker blocker, then that will reduce the level of tracking that's happening. If you are not logging into services that are tracking you, then that will also help. As an individual, you can make choices. And I think it's finding the right balance where you're able to do the things that you'd like to do, but still not giving out more information than you need. One choice that makes a big difference is your email provider. Gmail is combing through every email you send and receive. They're analyzing them and they're using the information they get in their algorithms. Choosing a privacy preserving email provider like ProtonMail or Tutanota can really help. Email is a good start. Your social network is another good one. Some social media apps are really bad for privacy, but there are things that you can do to mitigate this without throwing them out completely. For example, I silo certain apps on old phones rather than carry them around with me on my main device. I'm also careful what information I add to my accounts. For example, I don't give them my real cell number or personal email address. I give them a unique VoIP number and email that they can't link to any other activities. Your choice of operating system can also have a big impact on your privacy. Windows shares a huge amount of data about your usage with third parties. Google and Android are a privacy nightmare. Apple may not share information with others, but they still collect it, and this makes many people uncomfortable. So what's left if you're privacy conscious? When it comes to operating systems, choosing Linux is a good choice. The learning curve can be steep, so we've made tutorials on Linux computers and graphene phones. It may not be the first step that you take in your privacy journey, but down the road, when you're ready, it can have a big impact on how much data is collected about your digital activities. Then there's your everyday messaging. Are you using SMS, where phone providers see every everything you send and have even been known to sell your real-time location data? Or are you using DMs on social media like Facebook and Twitter, where they also get access to everything you say? You can make a huge difference to your privacy by switching to an app that is end-to-end -end encrypted, where only the sender and recipient can read what you're saying. My favorite app is Signal, where I can also do end-to-end -end encrypted video and voice calls. You as an end user, you can make choices to improve your privacy. I understand that people can become cynical. There's all this tracking going on, but there is hope. We have to look at alternatives and we have to look at ways to stop this. So your definitive opinion, privacy is not dead, it's still alive and it's worth fighting for. Definitely. The next myth we're going to tackle is that online tracking is harmless. Let's first address the sheer number of people who get access to the data collected about us. Google alone has a list of over 4,000 companies in the US and over 1,000 companies in Europe that they call authorized buyers that they share your information with. This includes all 
kinds of data brokers and advertising companies. But these thousands of hands are like a sieve and the information ends up in countless more hands, including bounty hunters, hackers, blackmailers, authoritarian governments and anyone else who wants it. A lot of the time then the data is being sold. Or it's just taken. Even when companies try to keep your information secure, they're usually really bad at it. All our information, all our interest and likes, it's built into a profile that someone then can hack. Giant data breaches happen every single day, and this information all ends up on the dark web. So the first reason why online tracking isn't harmless is because you have no control over where this information ends up, and that's something that you should be concerned about. Next, just one way that the information collected about us is used is to build a profile which they then can sell or utilize to influence our decision making. You may not think that you have anything to kind of hide or that you don't mind sharing anything with the outside world. The question is then, how is that data being used? Most people presume this information is just used to sell us another pair of shoes or something. And what's wrong with that? But companies aren't just selling our profiles to people who want to target our consumer choices. It's also selling access to you based on an algorithm that is saying who you are and what you like. Our data provides a granular insight into who we are, into what's going to attract our attention or get us to click on a link, but also it reveals what arguments we're going to listen to and how we might be persuaded in a political campaign. Companies sell this access to us and the potential of how this can be used can get pretty dark. It's not just about selling us consumer products anymore. Depending on the society that you're living in, how that data is used is, is really important. If we're all being profiled, then all our content is being utilized to basically decide what we see and how we are treated or uh, it's being used to make decisions about our our lives. Humans are already susceptible to influence, and the more someone knows about you, the easier this influence becomes. Typical people go into a service, and uh, whether it's a Facebook or a YouTube or the like, and uh, they start in one corner and then they just take the recommendation engines, which may be influenced potentially by someone that wants to influence you in a certain direction. Then finally, you're getting a worldview which makes you vote in a certain way or think in a certain way or just hate other people because you think that they are hating you. It can be hard to see the dangers of data collection because a lot of this stuff is going on under the hood without any of us realizing. But the data collection definitely isn't harmless. Should we allow that kind of profiling? It's a kind of a dystopian uh, world and we don't want that. That leads us to myth number three, that the information usually collected isn't personal, it's just feature tracking, so we really shouldn't care about it. But what is meant by feature tracking? You have location information, you have uh, Bluetooth beacon information, you have online information, you have shop information, you have your credit card information, and that's combined, all of that, so you can see if someone looks at something online, looks at it at a store, and then buys it. I don't think people realize how much data is being collected and how it's being collected. All this data may seem benign, but the job of a data scientist is to extract its value. You can infer quite a lot from small things. You're driving your car and then you get traffic information. That's useful. The question is, what are you using the data for otherwise? It's being utilized at times to get information that shouldn't be collected. So the fact that you drive the same way from A to B, it will know, okay, where you're home, where you're working. Potentially that data can be used for something else than intended. Like using location tracking tools to see who is meeting with each other. Is that fair game to utilize it that way? Your social graph can tell someone what activism you might be involved with, your political persuasion, your sexual habits. The inference from the information can be quite extensive. There's a famous story from a decade ago where a father got angry at Target for sending his teenage daughter advertisements for pregnancy-related products. He stormed into Target, waving a pamphlet, and said, she's still in high school and you're sending her coupons for baby clothes and cribs? Are you trying to encourage her to get pregnant? It turns out Target knew she was pregnant before her father did, and this is just from seeing other products that she was interested in, like unscented lotion and hand sanitizer. And this was all going on a 
decade ago. You can imagine how much better technology and data science has gotten since then. Again, a company might insist that all their data collection is just to enhance your user experience. But depending on how it's being used, it becomes good or bad. So when choosing the products and services that you want to use, be aware of what data is collected and how it might potentially be used. The next myth is that surveillance is normal and just a part of internet life, and we should just get used to it. <laughs> Are you serious? This is a particularly insidious mind weevil. Not only does it legitimize this constant surveillance, but it also tells people that they're powerless to stop it. Surveillance has become something that people take for granted on the internet. But if the same surveillance happened face to face, we'd be outraged. You wouldn't expect anyone that's babysitting for you to be collecting information about what you have in your house. Or for someone to be parked outside your home, recording how you use your kitchen apartment. Appliances. But when this surveillance happens digitally, people try to tell us that, oh, it's just part of the internet. This is fine. Surveillance is not inevitable, and we need to stop normalizing it. This needs to change. The cost of giving up privacy is just too big. What's at stake there? Our wellness, our societies. Because when you have a society where surveillance is pervasive, it has a chilling effect. But we want people to be able to be themselves and not have to be thinking about, okay, all of what I'm doing now is being collected. So if I do something silly or say something silly, that's going into the algorithm that decides my future. That, that, that can't be the way that it should be. Every time we become too self-conscious, we're losing the chance of being ourselves. And it becomes harder for us to find ourselves. Conversations were all once ephemeral. Words disappeared after they were uttered, which gave us the chance to explore ideas without passing thoughts being added to an immutable identity. When I was young and I, if I was doing something silly, maybe I would have one too many beers and the like, and, and, and there would be no one taking a picture of me. You have to be allowed to make mistakes and then you have to be able to learn from your mistake. And that, that's an important thing. With today's internet, our thoughts are turned into permanent records and we don't let people evolve and grow. Any fleeting mistake as a teenager can be rehashed 15 years later. That would be kind of how, how I would be presented for all eternity. Remember, social norms change, but that data is forever and can be picked over at any time in the future by any potential adversary. That's not the kind of society that we want to live in. So there's much more at stake with data collection than people just being able to sell us another pair of shoes. This is not only about privacy as individuals. This is about what kind of society you want to live in. Do we want to live in a surveillance society? I think we want to get away from that. Let's stop telling people these myths about privacy and that privacy isn't important because without privacy, you can't have a truly free society. Let's instead remind people that they are empowered human beings and that they can make better choices about the tech that they use in their lives. Our channel is funded by community donations. So if you'd like to support our work, head to nbtv.media slash support. Also, just liking, sharing, commenting on and subscribing to our channel really helps us. Thanks so much for watching through to the end.